Well, now, uh, here with me on this board are actually 10 money secrets in a marriage. And if you ignore them, guess what happens? Divorce is paramount. Don't act surprisingly and you're like, oh my God, it just ended. No, you had all the red flags to actually notice that the things are not going well as far as the money is concerned. And make sure, guess what? I'm making this video on the 14th of February. You guys, you call it Valentine, you know? So this is my message or this is my gift for you on this valentine day of 2024 all right so let's get into the business and by the way if you're first time you're watching me and this is the first time you're watching my videos make sure that you take that one second and hit that uh, subscription button out there you know just below there there is a small button written subscribe it is in black hit that magical button and also like this video it doesn't cost you anything and that's like telling me hey good joseph thank you for sharing this information let's get into it and never forget this just like an iron sharpens another iron so do we learn from each other you might get something by the time you exhaust all the 10 points you must have learned something let's get the point number one okay the point number one if you've never known the point number one and this is like the major contribution to the divorces as far as the finances are concerned is what lack of open communication open communication open communication these are the things that you must have in a divorce for example like several days ago i had a client of mine and uh, we were having a discussion and uh, he, we, she was telling me like we do not have any open discussion as far as the finances are concerned okay well it's not a must that i know how much my husband makes well that's, that's how we do it in africa i know maybe you're watching this from west and you're like what you don't know how much your husband so yeah it's kind of common thing in Africa. But anyway, the point is, you do not have an open discussion. Because let's say, for example, say you give a certain amount of money to your wife in terms of, uh, you know, eating and all those kind of things. But she doesn't even understand how much is left. Probably maybe you're giving 50% of whatever you're earning. So to them, they feel like, hey, maybe you have a lot of money. Is it just, you know, giving us or you're putting, that in a, putting us in a, what we call a squeeze budget. So it's always good to make sure that you have an open discussion. Sometimes it's good to say, hey, guess what? After every two weeks, we'll be having a discussion about finances. You know, we get to understand exactly hey you know what for example say you've been uh, giving your wife like for example um two thousand or ten thousand or whatever the amount of money maybe for food like three or four five years ago obviously the cost of living has actually increased so it's always good to, but that's what i always tell even men sometimes yeah i know in africa we always say that men don't go to the kitchen and all those kind of things but for me i will tell them hey guess what make sure that you visit the place get to understand like hey if you buy like a cooking oil worth like a certain amount of money for how long does it go sometimes you knowing the nitty gritties of your house in terms of the finances does not make you less of a man you know it actually makes you to understand how how the things are being ran like do you know like how much goes for the electricity if you're not the one who pays like okay you're the one who pays but you give it money to be paid out there and then you complain like all the time like do you know like how many appliances do you have in your house you have some oven you have the fridge all those kind of things like you know it's good to understand all those nitty gritties and remember one thing take care of coins the notes will take care of themselves take care of minor things and the major ones will take care of themselves it's always good to make sure that you have this open discussion with your partner get to understand you know for god's sake you're gonna be with them for quite a long time but if you realize they're not the kind of an individual whom you can bring them on table and have a, a candid conversation then avoid it you know there's some people who are in marriage but they're like alone you know you cannot have somebody who you can just put them on the table and have a discussion about finances then if you realize that's the case then carry the cross by yourself. That's a reality. But I would advocate for what we call the open discussion. Number two, have what we call the mutual goal. Okay? It's good to have what we call the mutual goal. Mutual goal. Eh? That thing that you guys are saying, hey, guess what? At the end of this year, we want to save this amount of money. Or at the end of this year, we want to complete uh, building that specific rental houses. Or maybe by the end of this year, we want to go ahead and buy that car. Or at the end of this, it's, it's good to have that what we call a we goal, not my goal. Again, I'm saying, I'm going to give a disclaimer on here because you might find yourself in a situation whereby it's like you are alone. You know, the moment you share an idea of investment, nobody buys that. Well, the moment you share, here, I want to do this, nobody even supports you. And because, and, and by the way, even before saying all these points, you have to explain to you, we have different types of personalities. It is good when you understand your partner. You know, understand, are they spend, uh, spend, uh, spenders? You know, are you frugal? Are you minimalist? Are you investor? Or are they investors? And such kind of a things. Because can you imagine this? If you come on board, uh, say maybe uh, one person is a spender and the other one is actually an investor. So the two the two of them spend at a different... See, the one is a spender on the consumables. The one is a spender again on the investments. So the two of them might actually be like, the one who is a spender on the consumables might feel like, hey, I'm being denied what I love most. That is spending, shopping, doing or having fun. And this guy 
guy is actually i do not know maybe this guy is through i mean this guy is mean is stingy and all those kind of things so it's always good to understand your partner as far as the finances are concerned by the way go check that older video of mine that i made and i said guess what understand your money personality because we have different types of money personalities okay so it is good to have what we call the mutual goal a goal that you're working together as a group and you're moving together you're pushing it out there so that each and everyone in that specific house they are contributing of their own capacities in terms of the sacrifices so that you can be able to achieve that goal in that particular period of time that you're aiming to get it now number three we go to the other point is called who contributes what you have to understand that who contributes who contributes what what do I mean by that point? See, we may have a family whereby they say, hey, everything here is joint. Everything here we have to share equally, like 50-50. Say, like, uh, we need, like, 100,000 Kenyan shillings for us to survive in a typical month. So it's you 50,000, it's me 50,000. There's some of the families that are running that way. And we cannot come here and impose some of the things and impose our own understanding, like, hey, guess what, though? Uh, this should be... Okay, okay, personally, as Joseph, I have my own understanding. I have my own beliefs. I have my own things that I hold on to. Okay, I still subscribe to whereby a man should uh, you know, contribute everything and anything as far as that house is concerned. We may have somebody who does not uh, agree with me on that point. And uh, I believe democracy is when each and everyone respects each and everyone's right. That, that's a reality. So the point here will be, I would say, hey, guess what? If you guys you agree on these issues of contribution, 50-50 equally, whatever, and it's working for you guys without any wrangles, and nobody's uh, sort of right is actually violated, so you guys go ahead and do a specific thing. If you come from a family where by you like mine like hey you know a man should provide everything and anything in that given house uh and i'm not saying that they should not be helped they should be helped whenever a need is arising and such kind of a thing so therefore you can go ahead and do exactly that so the point here is this make sure that at least you have a clear understanding are we gonna go the equal way are we gonna go like one party and the other party can actually chip in when the necessity has actually arise okay so those are the nitty gritties that you have to understand between the two of you let's go number four and number four is none other than you having what we call do you have a joint account do you decide on having a joint account or having an individual account there's some family Families, you might find like, hey, guess what? All the money that you get, we put it in on a joint account, okay? Or if there's some family like, hey, guess what? Each and everyone's money, you have a joint account. Or the some of the family will be like, hey, guess what? Are we gonna have a joint account? Well, I do have my money, you do have your money, but we're gonna have this joint account maybe for the purposes of something like um, running the operational cost of our home, that is the recurrent expenditures, or maybe paying the school fees or something of sort. Or we can say, hey, our recurrent expenditures plus the school fees, we're gonna be contributing that amount of money and put it in a joint account. You get the thing. So that what works, that what work, that what works for you may not work for the other person but if it's working for you guys keep on pushing exactly that and by the way on this issue of having a, a joint account or having a dedicated account for certain things this one whether you go the joint way or individual way i would advocate if you are the guy and you're running the the, the, the the house and you are the one who is paying all these things it's good to make sure that at least you have that account that is dedicated for all those kind of activities for example i always tell people for example say one thing one day you're gonna take your kids to school it's good to have a dedicated account for a kid and this account not not, not a joint it's not a bank account i advocate for an investment directly for something like a money market fund something like you know something of sort you know whereby you put your money the money is not just idle it's not really benefiting some other individuals out there it's really you're like the primary person whose money is helping and, and, and guys, it, it is good to make sure that you do this you know there is no way you can tell me play safe and then i give you the money it benefits you and Come on, be the primary person who your money is actually helping. So put that money in a money market fund and then you'll be able to say, hey, guess what? That is a whole account dedicated for the kids. And by the way, go check my other videos out there. There's a video that says, hey, this is how I can you can actually be able to pay your kids school fees without any struggle. Go check that video. It talks about all a dedicated account for that purpose. We go to the point number five. The point number five is none other than you having what we call a, a debt management plan. It's good to have a debt management plan plan because i believe most of the people are uh, usually have what we call a, a debt in one way or the other maybe you have borrowed in one way or the other so it is good to have that debt management plan you can say hey this house rakes in or gets in an x amount of money therefore x minus five will actually be dedicated towards paying the debt because hey guess what let's say maybe you have a debt somewhere and you have not agreed and then maybe they'll say you maybe your wife or your partner knows you want a certain amount of money and then when you guys are going to do the shopping and such kind of a thing you don't even tell them how much you're dedicating towards a paying a repayment of the loan therefore they're gonna look as if hey, they grow up they appear as if hey 
you're not open to them it's like you have some things that you're hiding here and there so it's always good to make sure that you have a plan and it's a plan that is working for all of you because this debt can actually contribute to very nasty things. For example, you guys, you do not manage this plan. You, are, you aren't in communication. And then all of a sudden, you guys, you have defaulted for quite a long time. And then they show up. They want to, they want to auction your house where you're living. So you even, you're putting even your kids, you're putting your families into nasty in environment whereby the house can be taken out, the property can be taken out, and therefore you're putting them in a risky situation. All right? Go to the point number seven. The point number seven is none other than having what we call the emergency fund. This one is not really something that I can even... It's just it's just a word. It's self-explanatory. It's good to have an emergency fund, especially when you have a family. You never know. Just something can ha actually happen out there. An emergency fund, this is money that you have in liquid form that you can access anytime you want, just in case a need arises. So these are the things that you guys are supposed to be taking care of. The emergency fund, just having it out there. Well, if from the West, they say you're supposed to have an emergency fund equivalent for servicing you for three months, but that may not be applicable here in Africa uh, because definitely we are growing economies and putting all that money aside in terms of you know if if you can if you can maybe it's good to make sure that you do so uh, for at least three months but if you cannot be, again at the end of the day we aren't here to sort of squeeze down your throat that what we think is right and appropriate for you that just move around according to how or what works for you exactly uh, there number eight is none other than you having what we call uh, uh in, in investing for the future you ought to invest for the future investment for the future investing for the future for the future you know, for the future here means that you guys one day going to grow old and you don't want to be a nuisance to your kids and telling them, hey, you have to help us here. You have to do this on all those. It's like you're putting your, your kids on a, on, on a thread line and telling them, hey, you have to do this. There is no any other option and such kind of a thing. So investing. Okay, we are doing all this open communication, mutual goal and all those things. The whole point is about investing the future for the future. And this future is not only for you, but also for your kids, kids and such kind of a things. And I made a video yesterday. It depends on when you're watching this video. Go check it out about how to create a generational wealth this is actually can help you to do exactly that and point number nine is what we call the regular reviews regular reviews regular reviews it means like hey guess what let's say you had a budget of a certain amount of money as your savings maybe there is an increment in terms of the salary you cannot be able to stick to that you have to go back to your budget and say hey guess what i have to go ahead and be able to do what uh to uh you have to go ahead and be able to go ahead and, and, and understand this amount of money ought to be increased this amount of money ought to be done something here and there so that at least you can be able to go ahead and do something as far as the investment is concerned and by the way i'm actually realizing there is a point number six here that i have left and that is budgeting you must have what you call budgeting budgeting is quite essential and i bet that is actually a self-explanatory you already know what exactly that means because you cannot be able to achieve all these things without you having the budgeting capabilities out there so regularly reviews actually helps you to understand what goes where and whether we are going on the right direction you can have a quarterly review you can have a monthly review you can have a weekly review you can have a yearly review depends on your family and such kind of things and the last one is seek professional advice or seek professional sometimes i usually tell people some time to time it's good to make sure hey instead of going that for an outing how about today is on a valentine as you guys calling it eh? so how about you say hey instead of today's buying gifts or maybe today we can do so but the next time uh, when it happens we're gonna go ahead and seek a professional we're gonna pay them and then they're gonna explain to us about investments about finances and such kind of a thing so as much as you want to invest on the emotions and the gifts and the flowers and all those kind of things how about to invest on the knowledge so that at least you can actually go ahead and prevent. Let me tell you one thing. By virtue of you solving the emotional related challenges or the problems or things, does not mean by default you've solved everything out there. No, make sure that you're out there and make sure at least you can be able to go or to do what to make sure that at least you can be able to as well handle the financial things and logical things. Anyway, guess what? If you would like those professional services, if you'd like my services pertaining to investments, how about you pick that number of mine from there? description of this specific video shoot me a call on an email i have my email there therefore we can have a conversation for now so goodbye and see you in the next one